My goal in this video is to show you in details how to tile a shower curtain. I hope you learned something new. Please like, subscribe and share the video. In order to make the cuts more consistent, I will divide the curve into two equal parts. The line you can see is the center of our curve. There are a few ways you can start your tile in reference to this line. It can be a starting point where you start with the edge of the tile and then go right and left direction. So you end up with the same cuts on both sides. As you can see, they're pretty small because about 2 inches or so. And when you tile any surface, you want to have as big as cuts as possible and not wasting a whole lot of materials. The other way would be to start from the center of the tile. That means the center of the shower curb should line up with the center of the tile that I just marked. When I lay it out, it looks like this. What basically had happened, uh, that small cut I had above was added to the half of the tile. So you end up with the large cuts that are equal on both sides. But usually you want to mirror the cuts you have on the curb to the ones that you have on the shower walls. In this case I'm using 4x12 white ceramic tiles. And the entire shower will be installed in a staggered pattern. That means that 6 inch curb will require 2 rows of tile and it also will be staggered. Once I made all my cuts and mixed the adhesive I could spread it on the outside of the curb. When you tile a shower curb you always want to use a modified thin set especially in starting ceramic tiles that absorb the moisture from it. In order to have a very thin layer of adhesive on it, I'll be using quarter inch trowel. When you tile your shower curb, it doesn't matter which direction you're going to spread your thin set, it only matters to have the even layer on the entire curb and the tile. The most important thing when you tile your curb is to keep the tiles level and flat. Installing the first row of tile was very easy, especially that self-leveling compound was used previously to level the entire bathroom floor. That's why I didn't have to use any shims to level the first row of tiles. Whenever you cut any ceramic or porcelain tile, your saw will slightly chip the edges. If you want to make your edge a little bit smoother, you can use a dressing stone, sandpaper or sanding block. To install a second row, I will be using laser to make sure that the top of the curb is in perfect level. When you set your laser beam, you want to have it 8 of an inch to a quarter above your shower curb. Uh, this will create some room for adhesive. Yeah, you can individually mark the tiles and cut all of them at the same time. Or if you are using larger tiles and your floor is not level, make sure you number them or mark them so you don't get them mixed up. Once you install all the tiles, just make sure they're perfectly flat. That means whenever two tiles meet, just make sure they don't cave in even slightly. Uh, you must have a smooth surface, because once you install the tiles on the top, it will show any imperfections. Alright, the outside of the curb is done, so we can work on the inside. To tile your shower curb from the inside, you must have your shower floor already installed and grouted. As same as the outside, you want to set your laser beam as slightly higher than the edge of your curb. Just keep in mind that you have to create a slope on that curb. That means the tiles on the outside of your curb might be as slightly higher than the inside. Because you want to have at least 8 to a quarter inch of slope on that curb. Before you mark this tile, you have to know how wide your curb is going to be and how much slope you want to have on it. On top of the curb, I will install one continuous piece that is 6 inches wide. When installing this tile, there are a few things that you have to be aware of. Because it will control how wide your curb is and how much slope you will have on it. It helps a lot if your shower pan is in perfect level when you measure and set this tile. But keep in mind, if you decide to pack more thin set behind it, it might be a slightly shorter because of the slope of the shower pan. Now uh, there are two ways you can install that top piece. You can overhang that inside tile by 8 of an inch or be flush with it. Once you set that first tile and you set the width of the curb with it, the rest of it should go a lot smoother. You just have to make sure that you keep the same width of it all the way throughout your curb and you have to have it nicely level and flat and that's all it takes. As you can see the inside of our curb is done. I will usually wait a couple hours before packing the thin set on top of it. You want to spread it on the entire curb, then use the 6 to 8 inch drywall trowel to smooth out the entire surface. I'm going to use 72 inch long pure white nano glass curb and I'll show you how to cut it. 
This task usually requires two people because the curb is very heavy and it's very hard to cut on a saw. But if you don't have the second person, you just have to be extra careful. The hardest part is that when you lay it down on a saw, you have to move it forward very slowly. You can't just move it up and down and twist it. Uh, this nano glass is one of the toughest materials that I had to cut on a saw. If you decide to cut it with an angle grinder and a diamond blade, it's not an easy task. Basically what happens when you try to cut it, the material heats up and it forms small balls of fire. Uh, glass or composite materials is a better option for shower curb than marble, just because they don't absorb any moisture. Marble looks good but it must be sealed from time to time. Before spreading the thin set on, on a curb, just make sure you dry fit it. It gets pretty messy once you spread your thin set and then you realize the curb doesn't fit and you have to recut it again. Before you install it, you want to spread nice and even layer on the entire curb. I'm using quarter inch travel to spread the thin set by spread it on the slight angle to get 8 of an inch thick layer. If you have a thick layer of thin set on that curb, you might actually create a wider gap, so you just want to do as little as possible. To install it, you just want to place it gently on the curb. If your outside tile and inside tile are installed at the perfect level and they have slight slope on them, uh, you shouldn't have a wide gap between the curb and the actual tiles. Once you set it, uh, just press it gently to make sure everything bonds well with the curb. Then clean your curb. Check the level again to make sure everything is perfect. Install that curb flush with the outside tile and I have slight overhang on the inside, more like an eighth of an inch or so. Once you're done with the curb, you always want to make sure you tape everything, otherwise the tile might slide a bit from the surface. Now I'm just going to highlight some of the mistakes that you want to avoid when you're building your curb. Number one, just make sure you have enough slope. 8 of an inch to a quarter is perfect to have it on a 6 inch curb. It's a common sense to have a slope on that curb, but it's a very common mistake as well. If you're using bullnose tile for, for your curb, uh, just to make sure they don't dip in the middle, as you can see on the picture. This is a very common mistake that some installer make. Another one is to install the shower curb first before installing wall tiles. If you use a natural stone like marble, just to make sure to seal it before working with it, otherwise you might stain it. Or the water can penetrate through it and the curb might get loose. I hope you learned something new. Please like, subscribe and share the video. And come back to see more because I will show in details how to properly remodel your bathroom and shower. Thank you and bye bye.